This is truly the best of both worlds. The waving hayfields hide unique trout rivers flowing off the B side of the Tetons. Clean eat, great fish. Not your scene? Well, no worries. Just a short drive up and over the road will have you looking at tall pines and mountain springs. This is just a fraction of what the area has to offer. This will be a short look at two of my favorite streams here in Eastern Idaho. I cannot believe the meat hang is already here. It felt like just a few weeks ago, I was on my way to Albuquerque International Airport, and here I am yet again, strolling through a small airport with Kowalski in tow. First on the docket was finding the best waffles this side of the Snake River, and after, we had to run by the big box to grab some last minute items that couldn't quite be brought on the plane. But with any and all serious stops now out of the way, we had nothing but green grass ahead of us, and it was time to go fishing. I have been having a lot of good luck on the Teton system just outside of town, and I wanted to get Kowalski on some pre hang fish to break those nerves and prep for the big dance. Now, when you're with one of your best friends, there's going to be plenty of shenanigans throughout the verbal tour of the local topography. And Kowalski, he sure did get a kick out of those horny Frenchmen and their love of Tetons. Late July on the east side means that it is hot and dry, especially in the afternoons. So sunscreen is definitely encouraged when entering this blast furnace. And it must have been my Midwest roots talking, but as we rigged up, I couldn't help but remind Kowalski that this was only a dry heat, not nearly as bad as the humidity in Kansas or Missouri. But all dumb jokes aside, we were suited up and pointed our toes towards the Tetons and trampled down this old track. This was a new section for me, but I knew there was a public trail that followed an old railroad line that could give us great access to some excellent looking water. The trail was well maintained, and other than some old bike tracks, it looked like it barely got used. And even with minimal use, I still found quite a bit of trash along the way, which is always annoying. I mean, the plastic's still on it. Like, I can see, it's like- brand Show new. us the rod. It's like brand new. Not there, I, guess. I will say, when we climbed back out later that night, the rod was no longer there, so hopefully whoever lost it managed to find it, or some other random person walked away with a brand new Tinkara setup. Anyway, we cut downstream with a measured pace because a butt-busting fall would be the last thing either of us wanted right before the meat hang, and even though we were making good time, there were plenty of distractions along the way that helped to slow us down. We clearly had some expert fishermen to compete with on this downstream section, and I had to fight the urge to pick this little fella up. Luckily, not too far down the way, we found another one that we could give a cheeky garter gander to. Modern day Steve Irwin here. Oh, hey, good eye, mate. This camera shot. There it goes. I learned everything I know from Steve. All right. What a beauty. What a beauty. Now, of course, we didn't come here for snakes. We came here for Yellowstones. It was time to buckle down and find some fish. Well, that's not a bad first fish on the brand new rod, man. What a great fight, what a great take, eating the dry fly. But yeah, when you're out in the west, the cutthroat, they're looking up, man. That's phenomenal. And just like that, the skunk was off, and so too was the plastic on this new rod. It was time for Kowalski to step up to the batter's box and do the same. Is 
This big Yellowstone Cuddy was exactly why I wanted to check out this new piece of water. That plump hopper was pinned eight ball corner pocket, and once we got him to the net, it was clear he wasn't going anywhere. Now, even though this fish looked a little beat up, it had a whole lot of fight left in it and kicked off with some serious attitude. Well, skunk's off. Skunk's off. Good stuff, man. Great stuff. Great stuff. Now, after we'd each managed to get the skunk off, the urgency to catch fish kind of went out the door, and we could already say that it was mission accomplished, but this didn't quite help with our ability to actually catch the fish. Take a, a couple steps towards me so that you can angle yourself a little bit better against that tree so you can cast further in. There you go. All right, now really punch that bank where you, where you saw him. Oh, set, 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 set. Oh, man. That was big. I only managed to pick off a couple more fish as the sun started to set, and they really seemed to be looking up, but for whatever reason, I could only get the small ones to commit to actually taking my bugs. We both knew going into the session that the fishing would kind of take a backseat because we had some other stuff that we wanted to film first, so just getting on a couple fish was more than a big win for the day, and as we headed towards the bridge and back in the direction of the truck, thoughts of an early morning were already starting to creep in the back of my mind. Powerful vibes are required to kickstart those engines again, so good music is obviously a must. But since this would only be a short drive, our later start allowed us to soak in the morning glory cascading over the irrigation sprinklers draining the snake. Now, it didn't take long, but the hay fields were fast replaced with cabins and cows as the pines grew tall and the pavement turned to gravel. We were headed to a familiar place. This is where Kowalski and I went for our first official meat hang. This was before fly all season and well before we ever thought this meat hang thing would become an established tradition. So even though it was a cold morning, we pulled up to the access point and it felt like a warm hug. <laughs> yeah, they're going off, man. You know, it's a pretty chilly morning, but it's made a whole lot warmer with the new fly all season hoodie, man. Woo, sheesh. The mountains just up and over the hay fields are so funny. I knew good and well it was gonna be hot as hell by noon, but after these cold nubs battle with my laces, I was regretting not bringing an extra layer, and Kowalski was feeling the same bite. Our only saving grace was that we had a decent walk ahead of us in order to access the canyon we wanted to fish. It just so happened we were yet again following old railroad tracks that had been converted into an off-roading path. It paralleled the river, which gave us extremely easy access, and with it being so early, most 4x4s were still sitting cold on their trailers. It's been four years since I laid eyes on this beautiful Spring Creek system, and nostalgia was hitting hard. So much has happened in seemingly so little time, and it's always funny how old places like this can bring up those thoughts. I gotta say, with how hard this area gets hit, it was nice to only find a little bit of trash along the way. Holy cow, it's like, it's full. Pick up your trash, people. But as we pushed on, the canyon twisted and turned with the river, and we could tell from up high that we were getting close to some good stuff. Sometimes I find it hard to settle on one spot because there's always that nagging feeling the perfect run will be right around the next bend. And fun fact, it never is. So we carefully slid down a well-worn angler path, and it looked like a nice run, so we couldn't complain too much. The hike had given feeling back to my hands, and rigging up was a breeze. It was time to test out our luck. Well, this is uh, a pretty fast canyon section. A lot of, uh, I don't know, big water, I would say. It can be a little bit daunting, but you can kind of see there's some structure within this big, deep ripple section. Uh, big boulders, big rocks. They're either gonna be sitting behind them, in front of them, and the main channel, of course. But just, yeah, looking at it with the polarized, it's deep as heck. It's super deep in there. So we might have to adjust our rigs a little bit and uh, just to get down because the water's moving fast obviously you know it's, it's deep so yeah just gonna be piecing together something more of a pocket water bite moving slow keeping it tight and just kind of yeah piecing them man piecing them together
Oh! Yeah, dude! He, did you see him come up? He came up from the depths. Oh, and that's a yard sale. Oh no. Oh no, you did it to me, man. That's oh so, no. That's so bad. That's, 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 in, that's, the, that's actually the worst. Yeah, that's not good. Worth the fish though, I guess. Worth the fish. Maybe. That's a cool shot. That is the perfect way to break the morning skunk. All caught on the FAS ADD. I've been plugging this thing left, right, and center. If you don't know what it is, I'll put the video up woo, right here. Look at that. That's the video, link down below. Now, this is kind of in a rat's mess, so I can't show you how it adjusts. The, the fish kind of left me uh, a little bit worse for wear, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut everything off. There's no point in trying to save this knot. It's just, uh, yeah, it's kind of effed. So we'll get this cleaned up, keep using this, and yeah, man, hopefully get on some more. After getting two fish out of this pool, along with a few bites, we figured it was more than time to move to greener pastures. But before we left, I wanted to stick the GoPro in the water just to see if any more fish were down there. And clearly we should have stayed a bit longer because there were so many big fish stacked up in just this pool alone. But the further up we moved, Kowalski insisted that I keep it the grind, especially while he could film from above and see straight down into the water. I had a few mistakes and one more fish caught off camera, but this run wasn't nearly as productive as the first. Well, we kind of messed everything up there, didn't we? We didn't get any that, good shots. And that was me. No, I, I, I didn't even have a camera on, so. Oh, mutual, mutual. Te teamwork didn't make the dream work happen right there. We aren't content creators. <laughs> We're not. We're just bad. <laughs> just bad. So we kept a fairly fast pace and got up to another beautiful looking run. This time, I would not let Kowalski talk me into fishing. It was his turn to break that skunk. Great cast, wow. Go, that curr! Try again on your left. Great cast, dude. Oh, yes! Wow, his white tip fin's so beautiful. He has getting chomped on, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. Let's see, man. Let's see him back. Woo! Skunk off. Skunk Dry off. fly skunk off. That's Dry awesome. fly skunk off. Woo! I trust my my notes section. I call it thoughts. T H O T S. See, I forget. Yo, yeah, yeah, you gotta write it down. That was such a good cast. That was a really nice cast. Oh! Oh! Yeah. Set that. Set that. Set that. He's in the rock. He's in the rock. He's in the rock. Fish. Yeah, dude, Woo! let's go. That's, That's a great fish. Oh, I'm happy now. I was gonna be mad if that cast didn't catch a fish. Well, what way we were like, oh, that looks like a good fish. That looks like a good cast. <laughs> That's a good cast. A good cast. <laughs> Our monkey brains. Yeah, we're in, in right full there. force. <laughs> <laughs> looks like a good cast. <laughs> that was a good cast. <laughs> See, that was a beautiful rainbow. Tells him a little bit down towards me. Being a good boy. Cool, let's see him back. That last fish swam away and our outing was quickly coming to an end. Much like the previous session, we had other stuff that we wanted to film, so fishing wasn't exactly the priority and now that the sun was high in the sky, we could tell that the trails were getting a bit more busy with off-roaders and fishermen alike. So. We both knew it was time to bail and head back to Rexburg. Final gear checks were in order because bright and early the next morning, we were leaving for the biggest trip of the summer. Folks, Meat Hang was here.
Alrighty folks, if you're seeing this and that means Kowalski and I made it out, the video is over. I just gotta say, and I know we both kind of feel this way, thank you so very much. It's very strange that you guys enjoy videos, stick it around all the way till the end. I mean, it really, it means a lot to us, but it also goes into this weird, silly algorithm thing. And the more you guys kind of like and comment, subscribe, blah, 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 it goes into the algo and it makes this channel grow, which it's been growing like a damn weed. It's been, it's been nice. <laughs> but I'm not telling you, you need to do all that stuff. I just appreciate listening to your stories, what you guys think of these adventures. So yeah, drop a comment down below. You know, we're out west, Kowalski and I are back at it, man, doing the thing. So it's always fun. And yeah, folks, wherever you do find yourself, be it in beautiful Idaho or in your backyard, sure hope you keep those feet in the water. And until next time, tight lines. <laughs>